What's up, After Buzzers, and welcome to the After Show for Incorporated. Today, we're talking about episode six, Sweating the Assets. And we finally learn about why Laura's so weird with her cutting stuff. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. You know, I just like to get into the groove and I. Uh, trying to think of what song for this episode and I think we played this last time but I feel it kind of works anyways guys welcome to incorporate after show we're talking about episode six sweating the assets and I know I kind of took that a little light about Laura but we'll get deep into that oh wow that's a bad pun too anyway um I'm Carrie Lane you can find me online at Carrie D Lane and my co-hosts are sick and the holidays have taken them over and so they're not here this week but they'll be back next week so let's just get right into the episode so we get a tiny little freak out moment with ben and we learn it's a bad dream which thank goodness because i was like oh crap roger's back <laughs> but oh no no he's still dead so that's good i was glad i'm like uh, uh and then ben just bad dream and uh yeah we'll just go chronologically with how this episode went because a lot i know jump back and forth but maybe we'll streamline depending on the moment uh, then we got Laura, and she's, you know, trying to reach out to her ex-servant, which is such a... <laughs> I'm like, it's her maid, but, like, I'm pretty sure they were saying servant, like, the tech. So that was another good example of tech on this show, because, you know, it's a sci-fi show, but we haven't seen a whole lot of, like, what makes it futuristic and what makes it different from today. So they have, like, the panels on the cupboards that are talking to her, and essentially, like, get another one. You can get another one. And she's like, I don't really care. But she tries to reach out and obviously, you know, uh, not picking up on the other end. So Laura decides, you know what, I'm going to try to go outside the wall. And so we leave her there and the rest of the entire episode is a flashback, which I know Joelle will be like, oh, flashbacks. But this was kind of cool because it was pretty much all a flashback. It was not a short moment. We finally get a lot of people's backstory too and it that's a different kind of flashback because normally you know a flashback is like you know one character or maybe two but this one had a little bit of everybody so i really like that because there was so much we ought to learn what do you think do you like the flashbacks on this show or do you like how this one you know was much longer than the other ones where it's more just a momentary memory because the other ones are more just like hey ben thought of something we cut to it and then we come back but this one was like here is Julia. Uh, I'm gonna keep wanting to call her Julia. Laura's backstory. So I thought it was cool. Let me know what you think. Uh, comment down below. And if you're watching this live, we do have a live chat. We do have someone watching. Yay! Hello. Uh, but if you're watching this later, feel free to comment down below. We love to hear your thoughts on the episode. We're fans just like you. And give it a thumbs up. Let us know you're watching out there. And then uh, we get into, so back to Laura's flashback. She's a little bit of a rebel going out with her friends. And that was some other cool futuristic stuff I liked was the eye drops to change your eye color, which I, I don't know. I feel that'd be really, really dangerous of like, so how much does that F up your eyes later? Or is it, you know, just temporary enough? I don't know. Make me worried of like, what are you putting in your eyes? But uh, they were doing that, which looked really kind of cool, though, and she gets a call from her mom, and she's like, yeah, we're just going out for dinner, which, no, they're not. And, um, damn, you know, don't trust the cute boys, who we learned, Bradley, and she's like, well, I'm just gonna hang out with him. Mm -mm. Nope, bad plan. And then, uh, lo and behold, she gets kidnapped, but we kind of know she's gonna get kidnapped, but it's kind of cool to see how it came about. He tried to be, he was so suave and nice, and I mean, if you're going to kidnap someone, that's probably a good way to go about it. And then um, the cops are like, you yeah, know, whatever. But you learn later, they get a cut, which I kind of figured that. And But it still kind of sucks if like, the cops are like, oh, you got another one? Yeah, have fun with that. And you're just like, oh, don't go outside the wall. <laughs> I wonder if there's a way to really go undercover, though, of like... We've talked about this before in previous episodes of the green zone going into red zone. Is there any way to really go from the green zone into red zone and not be such an obvious outsider? Um, I do like uh, later Bradley is like, I don't want your green back diseases when, you know, the people from the green zone were like, oh, no, don't like, you know, do anything with them because you're going to get their diseases. So it's kind of funny that they're both saying that about each other. Which is a really good point about, in general, the other. Because you're probably saying something, and they're probably saying the same thing about you. And then, uh, 
Something that was kind of like, ah, oh, just rips your heart out a little bit is these kid kidnappers are just kind of a normal family. It's a mom, her daughter. You t learn it's her nephew, not her son, which I didn't think it was really that bad of Laura to assume. She's like, the, the uh, Kim, I was like, I think her name is Kim. She's like, oh, you know, we're about the same age. Well, you could have a young child for all she knows. Um, so yeah, they're just trying to have a normal life. And I was like, are they is it just doing this to survive? And yes, they are. You know, kidnap people, make money. But she makes a good point. The female kidnappers like holds up Laura's uh, necklace and it's just like, this is six months rent. Like that's how bleak it is on the outside trying to survive. So that's just like, aw. Oh yeah, uh, Bradley called her Cogs and I don't want your greenback disease. So Cogs, I mean, that, that's a good bad nickname for them if you're just boring. And I think it'd go with like square, your square. I don't know. Uh, and then we got, we, uh, oh, the watches. So the watches was an inter another interesting thing because they have your emergency contact. Now I was wondering if her friend was changing it cause she mentions in the car that the girl's like, oh, my father's not even in town. So was she changing it because, you know, uh, he's not in town. So she'd rather a more immediate emergency contact because the other friend's like oh you're just being paranoid but uh laura lies about who she is she says a different name and that is kind of protecting her identity because we learn okay kidnapping a rich person rich person's kid great earns you money oh you kidnapped the child of a corporation oh that means a lot more money so laura was trying to hide it but Laura unfortunately doesn't quite know the details exactly of what happens when you're part of the corporation and you get kidnapped because you're essentially intellectual property that the corporation would rather just destroy than rather it fall into the other company's hands, which sucks to be you then. And then we're still doing the flashback because um, it jumps to Elizabeth. Well, actually first it was kind of uh, Julian and Elizabeth's different timelines going on. At first I thought like, I'm like, is this a new thing with Julian? I'm like, oh no, we're still doing flashback. And so we have Julian, he's being interrogated and he wants to transfer, he wants to go to a small town, he wants to go to Sioux Falls. And at first I'm just like, wait a minute, what's going on? And I'm like, oh yes, this was before. But this was cool to learn how, you know, he got involved with all of Spiga and everything. And he, uh, Elizabeth asks him to go against chain of command and go straight after her daughter because Elizabeth knows the corporation's going to protect their property, so they'll pretty much kill everyone. And Elizabeth, uh, she f to authorize the first transfer of money, she's all, nope, I'm not going to do it because she, ha I, mean, I agree because it is that standard thing of like if you give it to them, they could just kill you know whoever you're trying to get back, but I, it's hard, I guess. I don't know. Uh, what, would you, would you, what would you have done? Would you have been like, yes, pay it if, if you had the money, if you're the corporation part? Or would you wait because you don't know? Is it one of those your kidnapper gets what they want and then they're done or what? And then uh, she's like trying to do, hey, this is not, tells her husband who you're like, um, she said, no, it's not her husband because later she said dad at a different point, Connor. And uh, she's like, no, Elizabeth goes, hey, this is not a corporate kidnapping. And she has her nice little power standoff with him. But then they get the phone call when they uh, learn the, who Laura really is. And then the other corporation, uh, who I could recall his name, if you guys could recall his name, the person who was on like the phone call and he gets to see the phone, uh, gets to see the video message of Laura. And he's just like, well, darn, it's now a corporate kidnapping. And we get the, Ew, ear being cut off is lovely. It was done so well. It just made me squirm. Did you squirm? I did. Uh, and then we got, um, oh yes. Hello chat room. Happy new year, by the way, everybody. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, good prediction guys. I like that. And I was wondering back to the little kid, uh, of the kidnapper little family. Uh, I, I bet we get to see that nephew again. So it was like eight years ago. So he should be about 18 now. I was wondering that because he's still alive at the end. I was wondering if he's going to come back. That's a really good question. Observation. What do you guys think? Is that little kid going to come back? Is he going to be part of it? Or is that just a one-off and that's it? Ooh, or is Laura going to meet him on the outside? Because at the end of the show, she is on the outside. Ooh, I wonder. That's a good question. Uh, then we got, yeah, they're, the kidnappers are like, oh, it's pay dirt. Uh, but yeah, they're like, um... 
yeah, well, they pay you and then they kill you because, and again, intellectual property. And Laura gets to hear that. Oh, because the kidnappers are like, well, we'll sell her to the Inazagi. Bad plan, guys. Bad plan. Because then they all die. And this guy, Jimmy's like, no, this is a horrible, um, we, this is a bad plan. We just need to get out of here and they don't really go. And, oh my gosh, were you guys surprised when Laura kills the kidnapper? Yes, Kim. Uh, the female kidnapper, I was just like, oh, I, I mean, I understand in that situation because you're in like super adrenaline survival mode. But that kind of gives me a little more uh, understanding of Laura, of her issues with her kidnapping. It's not just like, oh, I was kidnapped. It's, she killed someone and that does something to you that that, I don't know, I guess it just justifies Laura's kind of weird, I don't know, we've, we've called it many a words, but her just, it kind of gives reason to her behavior of how she is now. It's not just like, oh, I was kidnapped. Oh, I, uh, I murdered someone, you know, because that's what we all do when we're kidnapped. So I liked that. I was like, what? <laughs> it was brutal, too. It's like the scalpel to the throat. Um, chat room has another good point. Oh, uh, the chat room says, uh, if we're back to about kidnapping, would you pay? I'd pay, get loved one back, and go back and then kill everyone and get my money back. Good point. That's a good one. Um, there you go. Uh, another chat room. We got, uh, they needed a better negotiation. You know, meet somewhere for an exchange. And, oh, uh, yeah, Elizabeth was condemning Laura to torture by just saying no and not paying. Yeah, kind of. I mean, she still got tortured anyways, and it, I don't know if saying no really helped Laura in the end. And then we have Julian to the rescue, and he comes in, and we think Laura's gonna get shot in the face, and Julian kills that kidnapper, Bradley. Yes, Bradley. And now we know Julian and Laura, this was the first time they met, because we talked about it, like, I think it was last episode or maybe one before, that their relationship, we were all kind of like, huh, I wonder how long he has known the family. Has this been, like, a long-term thing? Because Laura opened up to him so much on the when she was talking about her trauma and his, but I think they bonded over trauma. But now we know 100%, this is the first time they've met. He's like, hi, I'm Julian, I'm here to help. So you're like, oh, okay, now we know that. So that was nice to know. Uh, and then we got the corporate people arrive and the CNR is complete, Julian says. And uh, Connor, I'm like, I'm pretty sure his name is Connor. That guy is like, to Julian, I hope your loyalty serves you well, which it's like, man, we're gonna have, like, a corporate little cat fight here of them being like, eh, te uh, it's just like, why are, I don't know why Connor feels so threatened by Julian. I mean, I know Elizabeth kind of favors him, but still, it's like, mm, I don't know. Then we get the other semi-reveal slash way more questions. We learn a little bit about Ju uh, Laura and uh, Elizabeth's, Elizabeth's husband, Laura's dad. So Laura asks Elizabeth, so she thinks after she, Laura after she's been through her thing she's kind of like okay so I feel like dad could have been saved the way you saved me you could have saved dad so you're like that's a really good argument good point point. and now that Laura knows like hey they kill everybody she feels like her mom could have done something differently or done it better to save her father but then we get that curveball where Julian's like hey are you really going to tell her the truth and I was sitting, I don't know about you guys but I was sitting there going um, what do you mean? What what truth are you talking about there, Julian? And, uh, yeah, he said, you could have told the truth, but then Elizabeth goes, it's better she hate me and not him. So I'm like, oh, what does that mean? I'm like, mm, you give me an answer and you throw a giant question. So what do you guys think? What does that mean? What does, what does that have to do with her father? And like, what is going on? Because I feel there's something definitely there. Like you wouldn't put that in there and it not have anything of importance. So, no. I want to say maybe her father isn't who she thinks he is, obviously, uh, because that's something how her mom said it. But, and he was kidnapped. But I don't know, maybe he did something bad to get kidnapped, and Lord, Elizabeth still loved him, so she didn't want him to die. I don't know. That's a good question. Leave a comment down below. What do you think? What do you think the deal is with Elizabeth's husband and Laura's dad? and because they're, I mean, they're the same person, but anyway, um, then we got Connor. Yes, Connor. He's moving up the ladder, so Julian gets his position, but Julian's kind of like, I don't really want it, but Elizabeth goes, um, well, you're kind of the only person I can trust, so 
you know, you would want people around you you can trust. So totally understandable. And now a quick, really nice, like, ooh, juicy scene with, um, also that's bad visual because we have Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth, we have uh, Laura's arm all open and bleeding and a wrist rather. And the doctor's like, here, this is the best part of my job. You can't tell me I don't have the best job in the world. And she fixes it and it's like it never happened. Ooh, I liked that moment because that kind of felt like a reason of why Laura keeps cutting because to remind herself. Now, I don't know why she wants to remind herself. Maybe she feels like a victim in terms of wants to blame herself for it happening so she never wants to forget. But just saying it that way as if it never happened kind of goes like, oh, maybe that's why she cuts so often and then just fixes it because then it's like it never happened. It's a good question. And I think that was the moment when she decides uh, she wants to do that kind of a job and help people. I don't know how honestly she really wants to help people, but you know, it is that like help fix people the way she was fixed up a little bit. Not that much, but a little bit. And then we have, uh, we jump back up to the present well, our present, and she accepts to go outside of the wall. Dun, dun, dun. And then we jump over to Ben and his bro um, Tito, and they're tink Ben's tinkering with this device to uh, move up the timetables, and it's uh, Roger's watch, and he wants to make it look like Roger defected. So that's a really smart plan. So that's something, info that Ben was able to take from the other defector and apply it this way to his own needs and desires, I guess you could say. And uh, we'll just continue with that one. So Tito's at the bar with the watch and trying to hawk it off and like pay for it. <laughs> it's one of those like, man, the Inazagi people must just be really dumb because he's so obvious like, yeah, I want to pay for this thing in the watch. So anybody want to speak a watch? And the Inazagi people perk up like, oh yes, we do. So. Apparently, they don't really care about subtleties and they just want it because that means that they think they can go up their corporate ladder. But I think this is just going to go very poorly for them, which we don't really care about them. Um, and then we have Laura. She is lying to Ben. She's oh, she's leaving and she's lying to Ben where she's going and everything. Ah, so tired of them lying to each other. I mean, he's absolutely lying to her, of course. But their little lies that they're doing all the time to each other are just like, you want their relationship to work in a way. You kind of are rooting th for them. I know Joelle has been like, yay, wanting them to work out. Uh, Adrian and I have been, been a bit more like, no, Ben's going to go with his first love. Not going to happen. So Laura and Ben can't work if they keep lying about such big things to each other. I mean, their little lies constantly like, yeah, I'm going to go treat a patient, which technically, ooh, excuse me, burp there. Um, it's true, she's going to go treat a patient, but not in her office. She kind of left out that little detail of I'm going outside the walls, Ben, but uh, I just want them to work, but it's not really working out so well. And then Laura gets outside the wall, meets up with her maid, ex-maid, and the maid's like, I don't work for you anymore. And she's like, yeah, I know. Well, let me see the girl. So Laura's desire is to help the girl. This was definitely the Laura episode. And I don't know <laughs> if that's just, we've seen that bad of an area or I don't know, just maybe my perspective. I was like, I kind of thought I'm like, that area is not that bad, but maybe there's, you know, it's definitely not great for sure, but there's worse areas, but I don't know if that makes it any better of like, well, your area doesn't suck as bad as that one, but it still sucks. So yay. So anyway, so that was the end of that one. What do you guys think of that episode? I I liked learning more about Julia's information. Uh, next episode looks like it's going to be exciting because there's going to be like uh, things unraveling. So I guess I'll do some quick predictions, even though I'm not really sure what my and predictions now, are. You're after Buzz TV hmm. predictions. Well. I kind of said the one that the watch defecting for Roger's not going to go well for Inazaki people. So that's kind of one. Um, you know, I think if Julian figures out what's going on with Ben, I think Ben could win him over to his cause. I don't know exactly how, but I think Julian is understanding and smart enough that he might not be 100% against Ben's plan. Um, 
but we'll see that's a good question i don't know and then i think i'm i'm happy that laura has finally made the big step to go outside the wall so i hope she continues that way and becomes a progressive character and wants to help people more and actually does more proactive things because so far she's been very much like oh yeah i want to help and doesn't do anything so not much so i hope this means she's going to continue to grow as a character because she is an intriguing character if she progresses if she just kind of stays stagnant it's going to be a little bit like well i don't know how much i care um so uh chat room yes uh so yeah are you guys team elena this is kind of the prediction in a way too team elena or team laura <sighs> i mean i want i don't want laura to be alone but i am the more hopeless romantic that i'm like no ben and elena all the way so in the chat room we got the i love elena i'm rooting for her, the first love but i want laura to find her own happiness too she needs to learn about her father yes exactly i agree and then the uh, someone else added not a prediction but a comment of the ben laura relationship is frustrating because we barely see characters with emotions in journal yeah they don't they're not very emotional people i all these characters on the show are either they're zero to 60. They're kind of like, I am neutral and I'm not going to tell you anything about my life. Or they are bawling their eyes out or complete anger. Because Ben, we have him crying and we have anger. And then Laura, we have her crying um, anger too. But there's not really a lot in between. It's just like, I'm neutral and I'm not going to tell you anything. Everything's fine. I'm going to keep it below the surface. Or it's like freak out panic mode of emotion. So it'd be nice to see a little more color in there. But I guess the reason why not is none of the characters have anybody that they can be totally 100% honest with. So, I mean, the most maybe is Ben and Tito. So they're about the only people that can be honest. But otherwise, everybody is hiding something from everybody else. So hard to say. All right. And then uh, uh, loyalty is a theme. Oh, um, there we go. Uh, uh, loyalty is a theme with Julian. Yes, absolutely. Loyalty is a big theme with him. And a prediction uh, chat room pointed out, I predict he betrays Elizabeth for Ben. Oh, that's a good one. I kind of want like everybody to be on the same team, but I feel that could come down to it too. Uh, I feel Julian is definitely the... He wants to stand up for what's right, so if he finds out Elizabeth is doing more negative things and Ben's doing positive things, maybe not necessarily in the best way. He might side more with Ben. So, ooh, that's really good. I like that. Uh, so, yeah, guys, leave predictions. I think that about covers it for this week's episode of Incorporated, episode six, Sweating the Assets. That was a good title of, like, going with what it is. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much, chat room, for keeping a uh, discussion going. Uh... Oh, there we go. Another random one, guys. Uh, they're robots at work and... Oh, <laughs> they're robots. Yes, they are. At home and at work, they just keep lying to each other. Yes, they are. We don't. That's why we don't have robots on this show, because all the main characters are kind of like robots. I'm not saying they are robots. Their emotions are. Anyways, my name is Carrie Lane. You can find me online at Carrie D. Lane. That's K-A-R-I-D-L-A-N-E. Make sure to give this a thumbs up. Five stars on iTunes for all of you listening out there. Comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to After Buzz to be up to date with all the cool shows we do. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for watching. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.